Hey all, this is Ian Ober and I'm taking a look at Slack and giving an in-depth uh, tutorial on how to get started with Slack uh, if this is your first time in here. So Slack is a product um, that basically will give you a discussion room, a discussion group, a space where you can collaborate and work with others. A lot of technology companies use this as a space to organize teams and help people collaborate and get things done. Um, so uh, when you run a specific area in Slack, uh, it is called an instance, um, but basically an instance of Slack is one space that you create. So Microsoft might have an instance of Slack. Uh, other projects that you have might have an instance of Slack running. For one of our projects, we will have an instance of Slack running as well. To get into that instance, um, You'll notice that there is a URL for that. It, ours for this uh, video is infusingcomputing.slack.com. So if you go to that, you're gonna be greeted by this login page. If you don't have a login for this yet, you have to either be invited in or click on the super secret link that we will share elsewhere in our materials. But once you already have an account, it's pretty easy to get in um, when you get started my favorite place to use Slack is in the browser. So when I go to a workshop or when I'm at home working, I'll have a tab open with Slack and I can go in and see uh, the materials and the discussions. But I'd also suggest signing in on apps across your devices. So you can go to your uh, iOS apps and install it on your Android, I mean on your iPhone or iPad. You can also put this on your Android tablets um, and be able to see notifications as they pop up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I already have an account, once again, I'm gonna sign in. It's gonna bring me right into Slack. Uh, once again, I'm in the uh, browser version. So a couple things to notice while I'm here. One is it's gonna ask you, I'm in Chrome now, it's gonna ask if I can enable desktop notifications. All this means is when something happens, it's gonna give me a little pop-up window to let me know that someone's trying to uh, ask me a question or mention me or something like that. So if we sort of work our way around the periphery of this, I'll say ask next time. So up here, I have a drop down. I can see, uh, I can set my status um, so I can say if I'm working today or what I'm doing, I can go in and I can change my profile and account. We're going to talk about that in another minute. Uh, I can also set my preferences. I can set myself to away. Um, I have a, a lot of other things that I can do. While we're here, if you are involved in other Slack instances, I can click that and I can go over to see what other Slacks I'm a part of. So as I'm working my way down this banner, if I go to threads, I can see discussion threads or threaded discussions that I might be a part of at that point. Uh, I don't have anything right now because we're just getting started. Uh, if we go to channels, so a channel is Slack's way of talking about discussion groups or discussion rooms. Uh, so a channel will be a specific discussion about a specific topic. So you'll notice that we have a couple channels already up and running. Uh, the channels that are listed underneath all have a hashtag in front of them. So if I look at the different channels I'm a part of already, uh, you can see I have the code help session channel that I'm a part of, uh, code session, connect session, create. Those are our three major sessions. I'm also a member of general. That's discussions about our project in general across the years. Um, we have a parking lot channel right now and our summer 19, 2019 PD that's uh, this summer when I'm making this video. If I don't see any channels here, I can go in and I can click on channels and I can see other session, other channels that people have uh, set up. So if I want to go take a look at the science code session uh, channel, sorry, uh, I can go in and take a look at that. I can join that if I'd want to. I can see more details or I can just sort of lurk. So once I click on channels, I can see all of those once again. We'll talk more in subsequent videos on how to create your own channels and how to get around within a channel. Also, one of the things to keep in mind is if I look at a channel, I can go to the, uh, let's go to the general channel. 
If I look at this, I can see the purpose of the channel. I can also see the purpose up here. Um, and the nice thing is that when you look at a channel, if you want to figure out if you should pay attention to that channel or not, I can go in and I can look at what is the purpose of this. And does it really matter if I'm a part of it or not? You don't have to be a part of it. So as I keep going down, I can notice that uh, there's direct messaging here. I can see a number of people that are listed. Uh, the nice thing is that uh, what Slack will allow you to do is if I'm looking at a channel, so let's go to summer 2019, you can notice that a lot of people in the group have already started to chat. I can review all of the messages so far. I can see uh, you know, individuals, so I could see that Alex is in here and Alex said, uh, hey Marnie, um, and if you put the at sign and someone's username, you can basically respond back to them. I can see that there was a reply here. Um, and so over here on the side, I can see that Marnie replied and said hi, or sorry, hey, back. Um, so if I look, this is a message that I put up last night. Hey all, great to see people up. Um, if I hover over this, I notice on the side, I have reactions, I can start a thread, I can share this message elsewhere, star it, and I have other things that I can do. We'll get into those at a later date. So if I look at this, I can go in and I can basically give a reaction, like a thumbs up to this. So you can see that Alex gave me, gave me a thumbs up to this. I can add a reaction and I have a ton of emoticons and different reactions that I can add into this. Um, if I wanted to start up a, a new topic, um, I can come down here and say, you know, good morning all, if I could spell correctly. Looking forward to getting started. And I can do a little smiley face emoticon. And you can see now that because we're on a new day, I have a new message that's there. It is time stamped. Um, I can go in and I can add a reaction to my own piece. If I have a thread, a thread is basically like this reply uh, that Marnie had to Alex. So a thread is a nice way to keep your discussions a little bit more organized so it doesn't take up a whole page and people have to scroll through a ton of different things. What I can also do is I can share this message, I can star it, and now because this is my message, I can go in and I can uh, edit this thing or delete it. Um, so those are different ways to sort of like after you message something, if you're a little bit concerned about what you message, there's an opportunity to go back and uh, modify that. A couple other things while we're here, once again, this is a basic message, uh, a basic video to give you the ins and outs of Slack as you get started. So this Slack channel uh, is a summer 19 PD. This is just for this summer group. I can see that Alex already responded. Um, so what I can do is if I'm in this Slack channel, the messages will stay there. Uh, if I go to the general one, you notice that that message that I gave about just good morning, everybody, that's not there. I can go into the connect session. Once again, that message is not there uh, because that's only happening in that specific channel. Also, what's fun to do is uh, through Slack, you can go in and you can uh, direct message or private message someone. So if I hover over Alex's uh, ID here, I can basically click on her name and I can say view profile, I can direct message, I can view files that I've sent, I can call uh, via Slack, and so this is if somebody added in their phone number. Um, I can remove them because I'm an admin, or I can invite uh, to a specific channel. So let's say we're talking about something in another channel. I want to send Alex a question. I can basically set, I can invite Alex to that channel. But what's also cool is if you have a private message. So let's say you see someone's talking about something, you can go in and I can basically click on here and send a direct message and head on over and send a message. Uh, this happened last night. Uh, Mary Ellen and I were talking a little bit at, at the facilitators meeting and then basically you can send a direct message to that individual. So one of the nice things is with Slack, you can have you know, in the channels, relatively public uh, discussions with other people. But if you want to try and 
uh, get a little bit more help or a little bit more support or carry on a little bit of a private dialogue, you can go in and you can uh, direct message someone. So I can send message a message to uh, Veronica right here. So I can click on direct messages and it will add Veronica over here to this little sidebar and I can see my history. Okay, and I can get rid of these if I don't want to pay attention to them. Um, I feel it's helpful to keep this content on the side uh, as minimal as possible. Uh, last couple things I want to talk about in this intro video is uh, first off your identity and how you modify your identity. And then secondly, how you make sure that you stay on top of your settings and your notifications and privacy. So if I go in, I can click on this up here. I can go down to me, so I'm signed in now. Um, but basically I can go in, I can click on my name, and over here I will see uh, my uh, glorious mug. So if I go over here, I can look at my profile and my account. Any one of those directions is gonna bring me to this little side tab. Once again, this is a little bit easier in the desktop or the browser version as opposed to the app, at least for me. So if I go in, I can edit my profile. Uh, this is an opportunity to uh, change your name, your display name. I chose W.I. O'Byrne as my display name just because that's where I am everywhere else online, Twitter, Skype, elsewhere. Uh, for what I do, I added my URL to my website. I could just as easily say, I research, uh, teach, and learn. Uh, my phone number is listed there. Uh, that's important if you want to allow people to call you on your device. Uh, it's up to you if you wanna share your phone number or not. You do not have to. Uh, you can change your time zone. Uh, you can also list your Skype information if you'd like to. Uh, here's where you'd also change your profile photo. I can click on that and hit upload an image and then basically go to my desktop and upload an image. You pretty much know how to do that. So I'm gonna hit cancel because I am relatively fine with all of that. Um, the last thing I wanna take a look at is your settings. Um, so over here, you'll notice we've looked at our channels, we've looked at direct messages, um, We'll talk about apps and calendar and everything else in another video. Uh, if I'm up here, I can, let's move from left to right. So if I click on conversation details, that's basically letting me know uh, about uh, more details about the information that's here. If I click on conversation settings, I can view settings about this specific conversation that I've held in the middle. So if I'm at general, I can go up here and click on this little gear and get more details about this conversation in this channel. Search works really well. So if I search and I say, okay, I'm looking for uh, everything that someone said about science in this Slack instance, so across everything. So if I search for science, it's gonna tell me what messages are about science, what files, what channels. Um, so it's a very easy way to quickly see uh, where you should be going. So if I'm looking for help, I can click on help and I can say, uh, there's nothing, uh, Veronica sent out a message on help and I can go to the code help uh, channel to get info about help. So if I'm looking for help about any of our sessions, any of our content, I can go to this channel on code help and Veronica and others will be there to help us out. So moving from left to right up here, I can click on this little at sign and I can see what activity I have. So anything that people have said or done about me is all there. I can uh, click on starred items. So throughout the day, if I find something I want to star to look at later, it's a way to bookmark things uh, and get a chance to look at them later. Lastly, I'm gonna go up here to more items. Actually, it's a lie, that's basically all my files. I'm looking for my settings. So if I go up here to my preferences, okay. So I'm gonna go back. So if I go up here to the top left, I'm looking at all this information here. I'm gonna go right to preferences. So a couple different things here. Notifications, I said at the very beginning, I uh, disabled my desktop notifications. I didn't want those things pinging me up. You might say that you do wanna be notified uh, if someone replies directly back to you, 
You can have uh, badges in this. I just leave that alone. If you want to set up a do not disturb uh, time period, uh, hypothetically, you might have a life that you want to pay attention to and not monitor Slack all the time. You can set that up there. You can change the sound and appearance of notifications when they pop up. Um, and if you're away from your desktop for a while, what does Slack do? Does it assume that you're there or not? So notifications, I would take a minute to go through and uh, revise, modify, edit your notification settings so that you're not annoyed all of the time. Uh, if you go into language and region, you can change and modify that information. You can change the messaging and media format of everything. So. If you want to get a little bit more technical, you can go in and change the theme um, and the, the look and the layout of everything. Um, if you're one of those people that gets annoyed by emoji, um, you can basically uh, change that so that you would display emoji as plain text so that you, you don't see these little yellow smiley faces all the time. Some people are also annoyed by inline media. So in Slack, if you, ch if you paste the URL to a Google Doc, a YouTube video, an emoji, pretty much anything like that, it's going to automatically place that in line of the content. If that annoys you, you can go in here and change that uh, and clean that out. Uh, on the sidebar, that's this piece over here, you can go in and change that look and feel if this is annoying to you and you want something more festive or a little bit more minimalistic, that's there for you. Mark is red, uh, very helpful uh, for some people. I like to, when I leave Slack and come back, I want to know what has happened since I've been there. Unless there's a lot of messages, then I will change this to only start me where I left off um, and sort of like get rid of all the old information. Accessibility, uh, if you want to change some of the functionality of this, that's in there for you. If I go to advanced, there's a lot of other uh, elements in here that you can modify and use to help you out. Most of this stuff I ignore. The only things I'd change in, in the preferences are obviously notifications, one of the first things I deal with. Uh, the language in the region, pretty much self-explanatory. And a lot of times I'll clean up the uh, messages, the media, the theme, or the sidebar. So once again, this is a relatively quick overview as we get started with Slack. Um, I would recommend going into Slack and installing the apps. So if you are on uh, Android, there's Android apps for you. If you're on iOS, there's iPad and iPhone apps. I would also use the browser tab. Uh, that's probably the best way to get up and running so that you can see how to get around Slack. As you get started, uh, one of the first things you should do is you should go in and uh, modify your profile and your account. You can change all of that after this video. Uh, I would also stroll through and uh, go into the different channels and see what channels you like to get started with. Uh, we'll talk about channels you might want to join as we get started here. Down below uh, the channels, you can look at the direct messages. You can see who you have been messaging and what has been said. So I don't have any other messages with other people as of yet, so I'm going to close these out. Uh, this is basically just Slack automatically adding people. Uh, at this point, I only want to see the message that I've had and the direct or private message I've had uh, with Mary Ellen at this point. There might be people in the future. Um, and then we're going to ignore all of the apps and other stuff. As you get started with Slack, I can go in and I can see a discussion that's been happening by going to a specific channel. So if I go to general, I can scroll down and see things uh, and basically go to this message here and I can give it a reaction, I can give it a thumbs up. So once again, uh, Slack is a way for us to collaborate, be social, uh, share information. This Slack instance is uh, private, the one that I'm showing here, but any of the information that I've shared can help you for your instance and your use of Slack. So hopefully that helps you out. If you have questions, please ask them in the comments. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, let me know if there's anything that I have not discussed. And in the future, uh, the next video, I'll look at more advanced uses of Slack and how you can be a real rock star as you get started with Slack.